वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज दूनियर सेशन सेवेंटीन फ्रॉम द चैप्टर ऑफ वर्क पावर एंड एनर्जी दॉपिक इज मोमेंटम एंड फ्रिक्शन एंड द्वेश्चन विच आई टेकन फॉर दिस सेशन इज रिटर्न ऑन दिस बोर्ड क्वेश्चन सिमिलर टू दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन हैज बीन आस इन द एंट्रेंस एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ एम्स सो द क्वेश्चन इज नॉट द सेम बट इट इज वेरी मच द सेम so here a car of mass m starts from rest and attains a momentum of p at t is equal to 10 seconds the car's engine is shut down at t is equal to 10 seconds and it comes to a halt after traveling a certain distance we have to find the total distance traveled by the car if the coefficient of friction between the ground and the tire is mu so the coefficient of friction between the this is the ground and let us say i'm just drawing so let us consider this as a car so the coefficient of friction between the tires of this car and the ground is given as uh, mu now the car starts from rest so initial velocity is equal to i'm just writing it here uh initial velocity of the car is zero the car attains a momentum of p at t is equal to 10 seconds so At t is equal to ten second, momentum is p, which is equal to m into v. So it implies that the the velocity of the car at t is equal to ten seconds is equal to p divided by m. So uh, so in the first part of this journey, that is before the engine is shut down, the initial velocity is zero, and the final velocity is uh, is given by p by m. So now here I will be using the equation of motion for constant acceleration. Or for uniform acceleration, that is, uh, v is equal to u plus a t. So the um, velocity at the tenth second is given by p by m. Initial is zero, and uh, the uh, acceleration. Uh, let us say uh, uh, this: uh, the acceleration of the car is a, and uh, the time is given the time to attain this uh, uh, velocity uh, that is p by m uh, means this car has attained a velocity of p by m at t is equal to 10 seconds so time is equal to uh, 10 second final velocity for this first part of the journey is p by m initial velocity is zero so from this equation we get the acceleration in the first part of the journey as p Divided by ten m. So again, I will be using the equation of motion for uniform acceleration. So this is one of the equation. S equal to u t plus half a t square. The initial velocity is zero. So this will be equal to half a. A is p upon ten m into t square. T is what? Ten seconds. So this will be equal to hundred. So finally, I will be getting as this will get cancelled out. So this is equal to ten. This will get cancelled out. This will be equal to five. So that will be five p divided by five p divided by m. So the uh, distance covered in the first part of the journey. Let us say I am just denoting it by s one. This is equal to five p upon m. S one is the distance covered. in the first part of the journey that is before the engine car's engine is shut down now uh uh in the second part that is when the car's engine is shut down the car comes to a halt after traveling a certain distance and uh, the coefficient of friction between the ground and the tire tires of the car is given as mu so since the force of friction opposes the relative motion and if let us say the car is moving in this direction then the force of friction will be acting in the force of friction will be acting uh in this direction okay let us say i'm just denoting this force of friction by fs so if the car is moving in this direction the since the force of friction opposes the relative motion therefore the force of friction will be acting in this in the opposite direction and this will bring the car this car to a halt okay the car will stop after a certain after traveling a certain distance so the force of friction 
is equal to mu into n. Now n is what? n is a normal reaction where uh, a normal reaction is equal to the weight of the car. The weight of the car that is equal to mu m into g. m is the mass of the car, so the weight of the car will be equal to m into g. So the force of friction which is acting in the opposite direction is equal to mu mg, and this force of friction will decelerate the car. So so it implies that mu mg will be equal to uh, will be equal to m into a and i will be putting here a minus sign because here the uh, uh, the car is not accelerating it is decelerating so here the the value of a will be negative so a will be equal to this m will cancel out this is equal to minus mu into g now because of this deceleration the car will come to a halt after a certain distance so uh, in the second part of the journey that is after the car's engine is shut down the or we can say i am just in the second part of the journey in the second part of the journey the final velocity is equal to zero and the initial velocity will be the velocity which the car has attained at t is equal to 10 seconds so the, which was equal to p by m so the initial velocity will be equal to p divided by m so we have the initial velocity we have the final velocity and we also have the deceleration or you can say the uh, this uh, acceleration which is equal to minus mu into g so again here i will be using the uh, the equation of motion for uniform acceleration that is you know that v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s okay yeah v in this case is zero u is uh, uh, will be equal to p by m we know the value of a and so we have to calculate the s and s is the distance traveled by the car in the in the second part of the journey so so now v final velocity is zero u is u square will be equal to p square uh, u uh, will be equal to p upon m whole square that is called p square upon m square and uh, this will go to minus 2 a was equal to mu g into s so uh, from here i will be getting i'm just writing it here now that is uh, 2 mu g s is equal to p square upon m square or it implies that s is equal to p square divided by 2 mu g m square so 2 mu g s is equal to p square upon m square so s will be equal to p square divided by m square that is 2 mu g m square so this is the distance covered by the car in the second part of the journey that is when the car's engine was shut down so let us i am just uh, denoting it by s2 okay so the, in the first part of the journey the distance covered by was equal to 5 p upon m and in the second part of the journey the distance covered by the car was equal to p square divided by 2 mu g m square so the total distance traveled by the car total distance traveled by the car before coming to a halt will be equal to s1 plus s2 and this is equal to s1 was equal to 5p upon m plus this will be equal to p square divided by 2 mu g m square if you want to simplify this
So further, this can be written as if I take this LCM as 2 mu g m square. So I will be getting here as uh, uh, 2 mu g m by 2 10. Uh, 5 into 2 is 10 mu g m m p plus p square. Uh, because here uh, 2 uh, 2 into 5 is equal to 10 and 2 and 10 and this is equal to mu g m and p yeah so finally our answer is p square plus 10 p mu g m divided by 2 mu g m square so this is the total distance traveled by the car uh, before coming to a halt. That is p square plus 10 p mu g m divided by 2 mu g m square. So in this question, the most important thing was that in the second part of the journey, the uh, force of friction was uh, de uh, decelerating the car because the force of friction opposes the relative motion. And since the motion and since the car is moving, since I have considered the car to be moving in this direction, the force of friction was acting in the opposite direction, that is in the direction indicated by this arrow. And because of this force of friction, the car came or was decelerating and it came to a halt. And uh, the distance covered in the second part was equal to p square divided by 2 mu g m square. In the first part, it was equal to 5 p upon m. So by adding these two, we get the total distance traveled by the car before coming to a halt as p square plus 10 p mu g m divided by 2 mu g m square. So thank you very much for joining this session. And in the next session, I will be coming up with a, a different type of a question. Uh, but uh, probably it will be from a different topic. So till then, have a nice day. Bye.